I also say that I believe silver is the trade of a generation, that silver is the most undervalued asset on the planet, um, that ultimately, I don't think you can find a better investment, period, than silver. And when I talk about only if I had one trade to make, it would be gold, I would not be upset if it were silver. I just think there is a lot to be said for the fact that the central banks are buying more than at any time in history and repatriating it and reclassifying it and using it, I believe, um, in, a, in, a, in, a, in an ultimate drive to find some store, sort of honesty and transparency and stability to a new system. With that being said, there has never been, in my opinion, in my career, anyway, a better time to own silver. Spot silver dipped towards $22.5 per ounce on Wednesday, reaching its lowest point since mid-October, as investors awaited the U.S. Federal Reserve's policy decision scheduled for later. Although the prevailing expectation is for interest rates to remain unchanged, the primary focus will be on the central bank's assessment of the U.S. economy and any hints it may provide regarding future monetary policy directions. Andy Sheckman, CEO of Miles Franklin Silver, highlights the price dynamics of silver. Despite being a depleting resource and experiencing increasing demand, its price remains significantly lower than its peak in 1980. He sees it as a historical anomaly to have an asset that is decreasing in nature yet increasing in demand and is priced far below its historical highs. He sees this as a remarkable investment opportunity. If the gold-silver ratio improved, he even considered trading some silver for gold. One of the factors contributing to this disparity was silver's widespread industrial applications and its apparent scarcity in the market. Experts, such as Ted, have pointed out that silver is in short supply at the industrial level, making its current trading price counterintuitive. According to the Silver Institute, the market was in deficit by a substantial 237.7 million ounces last year, and the organization is predicting a shortfall of 142.1 million ounces in 2023. Andy believes that conventional metrics and measurements might not accurately capture silver's potential due to its distinctive characteristics and utility. Andy expresses that silver is the most undervalued asset on the planet. Even Rich Dad, Poor Dad author Robert Kiyosaki has said that many investors are not paying enough attention to this well-known precious metal, and they're missing out on an investment opportunity. In a Twitter post, Kiyosaki agreed with Andy Sheckman, president of Miles Franklin, that silver is the most undervalued asset in a generation. We will bring you clips from Andy Sheckman's interview with Arcadia Economics. But before we do, if you want more videos like this, hit the subscribe button and turn on the notification bell for more updates. Thank you and enjoy the video. I, I think one of these days the price just goes higher, but right now that psychological barrier of 2000, yeah, I notice it, people notice it, but not the way that you would think they would. I don't think it's made a substantive impact yet. And maybe part of the reason is the lagging of silver, which is is really difficult for people to see an, an asset like silver that has so many uses that is is by all measurements, according to people like Ted, um, in, in short supply in the industrial level. Why is it still trading where it is? And a lot of people have that that recency bias. I get it. I think there'll be as, as few people taken along for the ride as possible if you are employing traditional metrics and measurements by which you would invest. If you don't get it by now and take a leap of faith trusting your gut and your intuition that this is something that is not going to be transparent in and of itself by its very nature, you must see it, believe it, trust your gut, take a position, and hold on tight. Because this, this bull is going to try at every turn to buck you from the run. And I think the really big money will will witness the 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 huge appreciation those that have been accumulating and draining the exchanges but the value oriented person who's looking at at uh, technical analysis or waiting for a pullback these are the people that will be harmed the most because they will be employing traditionally valid measurements that i think purposely will be employed to misdirect the public so that they don't get in when they should. The same thing will be true with the money managers. So in a very roundabout way, a much bigger question or answer than you bargained for. No, it hasn't made a huge impact yet. I assume it will, but I think what's going on geopolitically is affecting people more than anything. That is half of its 1980 high. Now, I read something interesting lately, and it's, I guess you could say, somewhat conspiratorial. I don't know, but basically saying that the military-industrial complex 
because of the copious amounts of silver used in in advanced technology, military equipment and and aerospace stuff that they have been part and parcel to the uh, to the suppression of of the silver price. They've been trying damn hard to keep it down because of the amount of silver that you need. They wanted it affordable. They didn't want it to run away. Whatever the reason is, I can tell you that there are, I have never seen really an investment in terms of price, in terms of historical price, in terms of its relationship geologically, or um, just simply its outright price relationship to gold. I have never seen something that is depleting in nature and increasing in supply that yet is decreasing in price. I have never seen something that is priced at at a nearly 80 to 1 ratio yet coming out of the ground at 7 to 1 in any way you want to slice these metrics whatever investment you're talking about you have an asset that is de- decreasing in nature increasing in, in demand is priced well below its 1980 half of its 1980 peak there are very few things i've ever seen that offer that type of potential now if we saw the ratio go from where it is now to under 40 to one, I would tell people to trade a good amount of their silver to gold, right, wrong, or indifferent. I'm not saying get rid of all of your silver. I'm saying that it's an opportunity that doesn't happen very often uh, to see this ratio in a historical context it is rarefied error. It's happened just a very, very small percentage of the time over the last 5,000 years. So, Look, the bottom line is I like them both and you should own them both. And I think there it's a real opportunity to play the gold silver ratio. But with everything being said to me, it is the most undervalued asset on the planet and and the play of a of a generation, the trade of a decade. And if the worst case thing happens, you're stuck with silver. So what? There are guys like Bix who will tell you that it will go one to one, maybe even silver being worth more than gold. That's what he believes. But if it went to seven to one, would it be that far off of reality? I mean, I know it's not there and maybe never will get there. Maybe it will. With bond yields rising, inflation edging lower and geopolitical risks increasing, the Federal Reserve is expected to leave interest rates unchanged at its policy meeting this week. This would mark the second consecutive meeting at which the Fed opted to skip another rate hike in the current policy tightening cycle. The Federal Open Market Committee is expected to hold the benchmark federal funds rate at the current range of 5.25% to 5.50% at its two-day meeting. Andy anticipates higher inflation and criticizes the Fed's job owning, stating that their actions hold little substance. He believes the Fed's decisions, including a potential pause or rate increase, wouldn't significantly impact. Instead, market forces would play a more substantial role, possibly driven by events such as foreigners dumping U.S. treasuries or conflicts in the Middle East that could escalate, potentially leading to an oil embargo and a shift away from the dollar. The United States is heading toward default, which may not be explicit, but rather an inflationary one. Andy predicts that foreigners would become reluctant to purchase U.S. bonds and instead choose alternatives like gold and silver. In this scenario, the Federal Reserve, the Fed, would be left as the last resort purchaser of these bonds. Let's get back to the interview. I think that we are heading down a pathway to some sort of of a default. It won't maybe won't be an explicit default. It'll just be an inflationary default. I think we're heading into a, a period of time or to a place where foreigners aren't going to buy our bonds. They don't want to. They're going to stay away from them and choose other things like gold and silver. That means the Fed will be the the issuer or the purchaser, rather, of last resort. I think we'll see higher inflation. Um, uh, I think that what the Fed is, the, the job owning that they do is 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 nothing substantive. Yeah, they'll probably pause right now. They're not going to pivot. They're probably not going to raise. Whatever they do, it's meaningless as far as I'm concerned. And um, I think that you're going to see the market do the dirty work for the fed more than anything. And whether that be foreigners dumping treasuries or whether that be this, this, this conflict in the middle East spiraling into something much bigger where the OPEC nations issue some sort of oil embargo, which turns into some sort of an event where maybe even OPEC flips that switch and moves away from the dollar because how we're so not aligned anymore from going green to whom we're defending and representing and and backing and these alliances that are being made and chosen 
I think you're going to see a very difficult time in the treasury market. I really do. I think we haven't even begun to see the problems yet. So whatever the Fed is saying, it, really, it's just noise to me. Uh, one of the things I find most annoying is how the markets are so reactionary after Powell speaks. Look, let's just, let's just make it simple. The trajectory we are going on, a $400,000 mortgage two years ago at 2.75% percent was 1600 a month that same $400,000 mortgage now at over 8% is 3000 a month that's an 85 or 88% increase in 2 years and we're 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 not slowing down this trajectory and i i don't think what powell will say will mean anything they haven't been honest about anything they've told us to date why well, believe it now don't listen to the noise look at the big picture and um the big picture to me is something that is is much bigger than the Fed. I think the markets are much bigger than the Fed. And I think they're starting to realize that as we are seeing a lot of countries around the world just shed treasuries. And um, this is a problem where we continue to go deeper and deeper and deeper into debt. A at some point, you know, how high does the yield have to really go to attract more buyers of our debt? I don't know, but um, a lot higher than we'll find out uh, in anything Fed, uh, Fed Chairman Powell has to say this week. In 2022, in the face of the crash suffered by equities and bonds, silver proved to be more defensive, revaluating almost 10 percent. In the first half of 2023, silver is a clear winner with an upswing of around 35 percent versus 10 percent. What are your thoughts on the interview? Share your observations in the comments section below. Also, ensure you like this video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on post notifications for more videos like this. Thanks for watching.